Okay, we'll call the meeting in order. First item to is adopt the agenda. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. I'll second the motion. Motion's been made and second to adopt the agenda. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So ordered. Okay, then we'll move on to item number three. Approve the minutes. I have a change. On number seven, it says, um, Lashinsky asked if a sign could be put on 221st, it should be baton. I was talking about the trail on baton. Make that change. Otherwise, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. So ordered. Thank you. And we will move into the park financial information. The uh, first page the park capital funds. Uh, not, nothing has changed on these from our last meeting. We have a current balance of $59,000 in the park acquisition and development fund and in the park capital fund a balance of $80,411. All of our projects are complete for um, this year with the exception of the paving of the Booster West Trail which will come out of the park capital fund. And that'll be a springtime project, so we'll carry that over to 2022. On the second page is our operations budget, and that is in good shape. We're uh, in through December here. The weather looks good for most of the rest of the next couple of weeks, so we're set at 86% for a budget, and uh, we don't have a lot of park uh, items coming out of this budget unless uh, there's some snow plowing in overtime. But Is there any specific items on there anybody has any questions about? I think no, we I asked think... last time about the 333, wasn't Didn't you ask about that? Yep. Yeah. Go, no, go ahead. I think you did a great job keeping uh, the overall budget in, in check. That uh, 333 one, we've started constructing dugout covers and we're using some of that could actually be put into the park capital fund, but we had some surplus money in here and we're uh, using some of this money up to kind of tackle that in-house. So our guys are doing all that work by themselves. We're just kind of piecemealing that together as time allows. We've, we've purchased a bunch of steel, um, some lumber for the dugout covers and uh, sheet metal for the roofs on the dugout. So they've got two of them mostly constructed. We're going to kind of chip away at it throughout the winter. Uh, for the New baseball field, we've got a proposal that isn't official for the city yet, but the East Middle Bandits want to uh, donate some money to build some actual concrete uh, block structured dugouts on there. So we're going to be working on that throughout the next year, in the springtime anyways, getting some quotes and seeing if that could be uh, built. So they've also kicked around the idea of maybe uh, donating a scoreboard for that field. So maybe another nice feature for that. A scoreboard for that new baseball oh. field out there. Yeah, but that th those items there are stuff that uh, are major items that some could be placed in the uh, park capital fund, but we're taking care of them in-house with our operating budget. All the part-time employees are gone now, right? Correct, yes. Motion's been made and approved the second to approve the uh, financial fund. Any discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, then we will move on to 
park reservation forms and fees. Item 5.0, consider recommending any changes to the park reservation form. East Delta Park Reservation form and associated fees have not had any significant changes in the past 10 years. Staff have updated the form to make it more intuitive and easier to fill out and a few park facilities that have never had any reservations were removed from the form as well. The facilities that were removed are still available to rent or reserve and can be requested by writing them in as needed. Staff have also reviewed park reservation fees from neighboring municipalities and the results are summarized in attachment two along with the example park reservation form from the city of St. Francis, which is attachment three. Staff is seeking direction from the park commission if any changes to the park reservation form or the associated fees are warranted. So attachment one is the updated form. We just kind of got rid of some of the wording that wasn't needed in there. Made it a little bit more intuitive to fill out, uh, a little bit easier for us to figure out on there too. So right now for um, Booster West the pavilions, they are free for residents to use with a $100 deposit and non-residents pay $50 uh, to rent the pavilions, also with a $100 deposit. For the East Bethel uh, Whisper National Community Center, for residents there's no fee. It's kind of about the same price as the pavilions, $100 deposit, $50 for non-residents. Uh, Nonprofits are also no fee on those. Booster West, the irrigated fields are $20 per night per game. That's been the standard cost for the last 10, 12 years. Um, it's the same price for residents or non-residents. It's, it's kind of hard to distinguish between the two on those. $100 deposit, uh, $350 for um, tournaments for multiple game weekend use. The non-irrigated fields, um, there's no charge for those. For residents, we do charge $10 for non-residents on that one. And they are $50 for a tournament. The concession stand at the bottom there is, uh, those have kind of remained the same as well. $1,000 per season, the SBA has typically had first dibs on that from the money that they've donated in the past for different things. Weekend tournaments, they can rent that for $300 for the different organizations. And uh, there's a $50 charge for a one day tournament. Are all the um, pavilions in Booster, do they have electricity? I all of them remember. except for the one that's right behind the building here, but that one doesn't ever get really rented out very often. You can get power from the City Hall building if you need it out there, but there's no electricity on the shelter itself. And our concession stand is still going good with SA and however it plays out. We haven't had any issues with that. No. Just one up here now. Last summer they didn't. They did not use it very much. The summer before it wasn't used at all with COVID. But um, up until then, it'd been used all the time. <laughs> Attachment two shows some uh, comparisons to other cities that we kind of use in the, around the area. Uh, Blaine charges $130 to $150 for pavilions for residents and $160 to $180 for non-residents. For athletic field rental is negotiated. Ham Lake is $100 for resident, $175 for non-resident. And their, base, their baseball fields are free, but the uh, SBA is the only one that uses it, and they do all the prepping themselves, so they have somebody that comes in and drags them and talks and puts the bases out. Uh, Isani is free for pavilions. $10 for non-residents and $15 for athletic field rental. Oak Grove is free for everything. They, their athletic fields are mainly soccer fields. They don't have a lot of baseball fields that they rent out. Cambridge is $25 for a pavilion, $50 for a non-resident, and they didn't have anything for their fields on when we looked at their website. And St. Francis is the one that it, we attach. It kind of looks similar to ours in, their, in the way that their form was set up, but their fees are a little different. They have uh, kind of a bunch of different fees for different parks based on how many fields were at the park. So some of them were um, multiple fields. So in their athletic fields, some was $200 per night, but that included a couple different fields at the time. I think it depends on if they're connected to the school or not, what the price is. No, it could be. Because the baseball field at the high school would be probably the most expensive. 
And then we have ours on there for comparisons. We need to make a recommendation to city council because they will be updating the fee schedule at their next meeting. So we want to make sure if there's any changes that we get them on there. If we want to leave it the same, I recommend that as well. So. Do you have a rough number, Nate, of how many uh, weekends or whatever the Sibari used to do? Oh, I don't have a top of my head. I would say um, at least every other weekend there's a, a pavilion rental in the summertime. Uh, most of the time it is, yes. Yep. And Whispering Aspen's gotten a lot higher rental numbers there. I would say probably four or five a month up there. Some of the, sometimes there's two on a weekend. There's a couple of weekends when there's not one, but there's, there's a lot of rentals up there now. I think it helped when we put the air conditioning in for the summer stuff, right? Yeah, I think word spread too from a lot of people that if you're, a lot of people do like birthdays there up there. They'll just have a kid, like a child's birthday party there. I don't have to clean their house and everybody come over to their house. <laughs> pretty, good, <laughs> pretty good deal. <laughs> you don't have to have all the rugrats in your house. Right. <laughs> was, this, was this brought up this review just as a, something that hasn't been done in a while? Or Correct. Was, or yep. was there a concern by somebody? Or? No concern from us. We just want to get a get the Park Commission's uh, recommendation on it. And uh, we did, like I said, we did change the format on there too. So. Are there additional costs to the city for like park pavilion rentals? I mean, is other than just picking an extra round of garbage up? I mean, is there any anything that's actually costing us? The costs would be um, uh, cleaning, paper products, uh, soap, things like that. They get they get used at a lot of the. Uh, when they rent the pavilions out here, they get access to the bathrooms. Okay. So there's that there's that side of it, um, and then garbage haul out afterwards. So would it be reasonable then to put some sort of fee on that to recover at least part of that? I think it could be just justified um, to recover that, or you know, if you want to look at it as a benefit to this residents of the city, that depends on how the park commission wants to look at how to view it. What do you What do you think it actually costs us for each rental? Yeah, um, probably twenty five dollars or something. Well, we probably got a couple of guys, at least an hour of staff time. And probably between fifteen and hundred bucks okay. per rental. Well, I like the idea for a resident being free; they're already paying for the park. I agree, and I, and I think that the park would be used more. Like it's hard to reserve one, you know. Maybe and then we think about putting a, a fill fee on it or something, um, increasing the fees. But I, I agree. I, I think that's a good point. I think that's kind of why Blaine had to raise theirs up higher. They had a lot more demand for it and stuff. So, well, they probably got increased costs too, over and above what we've yeah, got. Yeah, they've reinvented you know. themselves, so they've put a lot of money into their fields, built new fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any any of these rent, any of these costs come out of our operating budget that we looked at there, and I mean we do we haven't had any overruns and. We're not getting pinched really by any of these small, small items. So, if it got to the point like you said, where it was, yeah, I think keeping keeping the cost down, if, you know, as a, as a benefit to the residents or even local or non-residents, helps to draw people to the community too, um, and get them used more. So, yeah, once if they start getting used more, and, and we can start to do more, um, maybe that would show some benefit. I don't, I think. Uh, The demand is really high for our athletic fields on Tuesdays and Thursday nights for some reason. 
And we'll look at that at the January meeting when we get all the applications in. So we have to stagger those rentals from the different organizations because there's so many people that want to use those fields. But um, there again, if you raise the rates, it just comes back to the parents and the kids and the teens. So <clears throat> as long as we're not getting swamped by them and overrun by it. to uh, leave the fees as, as they are? Whatever recommendation if, you guys want to make, yep. Yeah. If so, I'll so move. I'll second Whoever that. Whoever wants to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion to leave as is and the second in the discussion. Not all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, I have it. Okay, then we'll move on to number six, Park Commission appointment. Is this where we tell you that we're just disappointed in you? <laughs> Pardon? Come on, Ken. <laughs> I see uh, in reading it, I see there was a different one that was Park Commissioner. Instead of land meat, it was land meat. Oh, oh yeah. You've yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been sliding all these years, huh? Yeah. Uh, item 6.0 Consider a recommendation to City Council for the appointment of Park Commission seats. The three year terms of Bonnie Harvey, Bill Zimmerman, and Ken Langmaid will expire in January of 2022. Ms. Harvey and Mr. Zimmerman have indicated that they would like to be considered for serving another term and the city council would like a recommendation from the commissions in favor or against the reappointments of existing commissioners. The new terms will run from January 2022 to January 2025. Mr. Langman has indicated that the January 2022 Park Commission meeting will be his last meeting as a Park Commissioner. Ken Langmaid has served as a Park Commissioner since 2007 with a number of those 15 years serving as a chairperson for the commission. The City of East Bethel would like to thank Mr. Langmaid for his years of public service and his knowledge and experience will be greatly missed. The upcoming vacant position has been advertised for on the community billboard and city website. Thank you, Ken. For well, everything you've done. I would like to thank the committee because I tell you, you guys have treated me so wonderful, and I just hate to leave, but I figure it's it's time to for me to sit back and take life a little easier. So uh, uh, it brings tears to my eyes to think I'm missing all of you, uh, and uh, I just nothing I can do but say thank you to all of you. Uh, do we need to do some action on this now or? Yes. Yep. Yes, we need a motion to. Permanently make you part of the committee. <laughs> yeah, there, that, that'll work. Well, I can't vote until you retire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need a motion for Bonnie Harvey and Bill Zimmerman to continue, uh, which I'll make right now. I'll second the motion. Motion's been made and second to approve Bonnie Harvey and Bill Zimmerman. Continue. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Ken, in all sincerity, we really do appreciate everything you've done for the Park Commission and the city and as a whole. Uh, we're going to have a ceremony or a uh, um, um, time at the first meeting, city council meeting in February, we'd like to invite you to, and the city council will recommend you, or uh, thank you for your service at that time formally too, so keep that on your calendar open. I think it's uh, whatever the second Monday in February is, the first meeting in February, so. So you're still, you're still on, this, on the, on the uh, take for January's meeting too, so you're not excused from that yet. <laughs> okay. 14th? Valentine's Day. Oh, oh how perfect. Oh. <laughs> Don't let him tell you this is a day you win. Make him take yeah. you somewhere. The 14th? Yep.
Okay, and then we will move on to item number seven. Wanda? Good evening, everybody. Welcome. December. Ho, 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 maybe. <laughs> I don't have much to add. I have a few really important things, though. Uh, City Council met last night, and the budget and the levies were all approved uh, with public comment. But there really wasn't much comment. There were a couple of things. But other than that, the budget and levies were all approved last night. So that, at least that part of the job is done for now. Our levy increase is at 1.5%. We are the eighth lowest in the cities in Anoka County. So we are still holding our own at that point. Uh, the EDA gave a report last night and they had quite a few projects that were completed over the year. Um, as everybody or most people know, the frontage road, Sand Hill Parkway is now open. That was a big deal. Uh, the quick trip there will commence building in 2023. I still don't have a good answer on why they're waiting so long. They say, that's what they say, that so it can compact down. So that'll come in in 2023 now. For housing projects this year, the EDA reported uh, that Viking Preserve is full. There are no more lots in that area. The second edition of the apartment buildings is being built now. And rumor has it that half of those are pre-rented. So that's good news. Uh, the Anderson that you approved the park dedication fees the last meeting, that is already roads are in and the first house is being built at Durant and 213th. The big commercial projects this year were of course getting Quick Trip in and then the Pan of Gold bread distribution factory is down in the um, business park down there next to Aggressive Hydraulics. That should be open in the spring or up for business in the spring. Um, basically, they're going to bake the breads in St. Cloud. They're gonna bring them to this distribution area where we will have box type trucks, panel type trucks, and they'll deliver them to schools and restaurants. It's a more of a commercial baker. And so that should be done in the spring. And then Aggressive Hydraulics just completed a huge new addition on the back of their property. And uh, that is now complete and it should add an additional 20 jobs to that area. Uh, Pan of Gold is supposed to, they're saying 27 jobs. So those are, are pretty good. Um, there's been a lot of cleanup through the um, zoning department. There's been some cleanup at various sites throughout the area. Um, you can see if you go down the long 65 east, uh, down in the old part of town, I guess for lack of a better word, they've done some cleanup through there. Um, the car lot they're still working on, that should, should be, as I affectionately call it, the junkyard, but it is actually a car lot. They are working on that because they are not following their regulations in there. And of course, it's the first thing you see as you come into East Bethel. So, you know, there's a push to try and do something so that it looks a little better through there. Where's that one, Wanda? Right as you come off 187th, right south of uh, Route 65. Route 65. Okay. That, yep. that one there. Uh, those were the big projects that they have. You're going to see. Um, the soda storage unit there, just south of the skating rink, is it was a, it's been approved for a number of years now. Uh, they will be doing an addition there, so there'll be some more storage units being put in there. Um, and there's a couple, there's quite a few other proposals out there, but as you can see, we kind of have limited land that has city sewer and water. So it's kind of, you know, most industrial, most light industrial want city sewer and water. So, you know, that I think is going to be the next big project that 
everybody's going to have to be talking about is where is that going to go. Um, a couple of other things that came up. Um, for those of you who saw on Saturday night, the fire department and sheriff and um, Alina Health came through a lot of our communities with their fire truck. They collected 1,143 pounds, 1,153 pounds of food for NACE. And they delivered that to NACE. Uh, NACE was very, very grateful and the, the communities they went through had a lot of fun and the fire department from what we heard had a lot of fun. So that was a good thing. On the fire department on January 29th, it is a Saturday at Firehouse One. They are coming back again with their breakfast. Um, Route 65 is sponsoring it. It'll be eight scrambled eggs and all the fixings. Eight dollars for adults and I don't remember, four dollars for 12 and something and under is free. Some little ones are free. That's, I'm so good at that. <laughs> um, one other thing that came up, and I think Nate and I had talked about this once before, and I got an email on it, and since the Parks Department has so much extra money right now, maybe we can talk about dog stations on the trails on Booster West and Booster East. Park, I've got a couple of emails on that again. I think I got one from the same person. Mm -hmm. There's Probably. only one person. <laughs> Well, there's a couple of people, but there's one really strong voice. The uh, the Park Commission looked at that, what was it, two years ago? And at the time, they decided they weren't going to get the city and put money into that. But it's something we can take a look at again. I think we, we you guys are doing so well on your budget, it might be worth taking a look at it again. A couple of stations somewhere. Now that the trail's going to go on the other side, too. So, and I think, personally, if the stations are there, you use them. If they're not there, people tend to leave nasty waste you, around. You hope they use them, but that's not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, for the most, if they're available. If they're available, they tend to use them more. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I want to personally thank you for your service. That's a long time, and I also would like to say I didn't vote for you to retire, but I wish you the best. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. And I want to wish everybody a happy holiday. This will be the last park meeting before the holiday. So everyone have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks Thank again, you. Wanda. Um, I see we have uh, two other councilmen here. Tim Harrington, did you want to say anything? Thank you, Tim. And Brian Mundell, Jr. I don't want to say it all. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for your service. You've been a prime example for the city. Very good. OK. Nate, do you have anything else? Uh, we just completed our Tree City USA application. And this should be, I think, eight years in a row now. If we get approved, I think we should, should qualify for that. Um, as far as re winter recreation activities in the city, what we've been working on, the city rebuilt the uh, sliding hill in Booster West, and it made it quite a bit uh, bigger, uh, really shaped it. It's, I think it'll be pretty nice if we get some decent snow on there. We moved a couple trees that were near the bottom that were kind of targets for dangerous spots, and it looks like it should be pretty fun if anybody's looking for a place to go sliding. Uh, we are flooding the outdoor hockey rink. There will not be a warming house again there this year because of COVID concerns and having people congregating in there. But the, the, the ice rink will be open for uh, hopefully here in a couple weeks. It looks like it gets cold after tomorrow. So, And the cross-country ski trails will be open at um, Fish Lake if anybody wants to do that once we get some more snow up there. That's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Nate. Oh, I hope, sorry, one more thing. Bonnie had mentioned, too, that uh, the Coon Lake Beach Association are looking to do a sliding hill down there on a piece of property. So that's something we're going to start kind of talking to them about. We have plenty of material to build a sliding hill if they want, if they can find a good location for it down there. So uh, that, that was one of their items that came from their uh, meeting the other night. So just kind of make the Park Commission aware of that, too. But 
just a matter of finding a location down there. So, so, so officially we have two sledding hills now? We have four officially. We have one at Norsland Manor Park off of Viking Boulevard. We have one across on 221st at Northern Boundaries. We have the one in Booster Park and we have kind of a makeshift one at Oak Brook Acres off of Durant and Wild Rice there. We just mowed that all down and it's in good shape if we can get some snow there too. But. The Booster West one is a big one. <laughs> okay, any of the committee have any other reports that they would like to make? If not, they'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. Motion's been made and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all.